So there's lots of considerations that went into this garden and spacing design layouts. I did um, some hand drawing, Visio, Microsoft Visio drawings. And then I've done um, out here with cardboard and boxes, um, figuring out that layout. This space was actually just all kind of hard pack, like the rest of the driveway. It was just one big open kind of parking lot behind our house um, or behind the garage. And this is all fill. And one of the things was um, we had two options being the best spot on the property for the sun. Um, gets really good east and west exposure was to put an in-ground garden here or raised bed. And there's a couple factors went into that decision. Some of it was about my physical health. I've had three hip surgeries. I just had a hip replacement two years ago in a couple months, it'll be two years. And so physically I was not going to be able to keep up with a ground garden as much. I can probably do 15 to 20 minutes of ground garden work at a time um, with a long rest between physically. So the tall raised bed solved that problem a lot. They also um, help with cutting down the amount of weeds. Um, you don't have the, the grass growing in and things like that. And we weren't sure exactly what was used to build this up from a fill standpoint. Um, so we figured it was probably safe um, for food consumption, but it was something that we were like, eh, we're not really sure what, what these previous owners had done and, and used and things like that. So with that, um, you doing the raised beds and doing um, hugo culture, the lasagna layering technique to fill these beds, um, we didn't need to put the cardboard or fabrics down or anything like that, like a lot of times you would if you went and put it in the middle of the yard um, because there was nothing growing here or there was a few things kind of like this. But we used the tractor, scraped it up. There's some early videos from last spring that you can go back and watch. We put down even more gravel to level out the space because it wasn't leveled at all. Um, and then we installed the beds um, from there, layering them with dirt and logs and brush and things like that, um, up to the top, you know, about 12 inches, and then that top 12 inches is, is a high quality compost. Um, and so from a safety standpoint, we weren't really that worried, but if we had dug down into this space for a, um, a in-ground garden bed, we would have been dealing with water runoff, more weeds, my physical health of keeping up and maintaining the gardens, and a bunch of other things. So that's really what came into the factory here. Uh, and then when we were researching what types of garden we wanted to do, we knew it was veggie, but we didn't know what type or bed style, whatever we wanted to do. I We had wanted to do market gardens. We started YouTubing and Jace found Self-Sufficient Me. And you will probably, if anyone has watched uh, Mark's videos over there, you will see um, probably very clearly some of the inspiration from Self-Sufficient Me's gardens. Um, the, the big difference is that um, Jace is very OCD and so he likes things nice and clean and straight lines. And so um, I do try to keep the garden in a much cleaner state than I probably would. I would um, the pruning is really good and all that stuff, but um, he's more of a perfectionist on, on that sense. So I do try to keep this very clean for him so he's happy when he comes out here and, and works with me or helps me out. Or uh, Last night we sat in the chairs for a while talking. So um, it is a, a joint space here. And so even though, you know, he loves the peas growing wild, but he likes them growing wild up and contained and not flopping and falling out of the bed. Um, sometimes the potatoes drive him a little bit nuts when they do that. So where I can, I do try to keep a pretty neat garden. It also helps me make sure I'm keeping up on top of it by doing, you know, some of the weeding a couple times a week um, out of this. It makes it so when I do need to actually, if I had waited between the weeding would be much worse, a lot more pressure on the plants. Um, and then I also tend to crowd my plants and companion plant pretty closely and that actually does cut down on the weeding as well. So there's a few factors. Um, when we were going through and figuring out what lengths or widths and spacing to do, um, we were looking at, of course, Kevin at Epic Garden in Self-Sufficient Me's style where he put them all, beds all up 
I made one big line. I wanted to be able to reach around because I'm not so tall. Um, and then um, we looked at uh, Roots and Refuge, Jess's um, garden, even though hers was lower raised beds with you know wooden raised beds, still some of the mythologies are, are similar. Um, and I liked how she put flowers throughout her gardens and things like that. And I always had flower gardens growing up. I think I started mine at three or age three or four, um, and converted my mom's whole front yard into a perennial bed. So um, <laughs> by the time I think I was 15 or so, um, and so uh, that is one of those things where I needed. I needed some color in my life here um, and it's great for pollinators and then I was learning about things like alyssum and, and um, uh, getting attracting hoverflies and different things where there's some really good benefits there. So for the spacing, um, we were really wanting to make sure this was very functional. Both of it, Jay and I are, are very functional first type mentality and so what we decided was we needed to be able to put a wheelbarrow through here or in our garden cart through here and still be able to walk around it um, on these main rows versus these little rows, the short rows or the short way, got to move that still. Let's go look at this one. On the short way here, this just needed a wheelbarrow to be able to fit through. I think it's 56 and a half for the wide rows and 36 for the short rows to be able to hit, fit the wheelbarrow across it. So I get to ask that a lot about spacing and design and how we figured out what we wanted. This has been fantastic. Yes, we could have crammed them closer together, but we actually had the space. And for a home gardening, backyard gardening to try to be self-sufficient in potatoes, peppers, onions, garlic, uh, tomatoes, and um, for, the, for a year worth. This is actually pretty close to what we need. Granted, we do have the field garden for a lot of the garlic as well. The mulch is from a local logger who was nice enough to bring us a massive load last year. And that also has made it easier to walk versus the um, gravel rocks that were here and um, has cut down on weeds even more. Hopefully that helps you when you're designing your garden, things to think about. Um, look at the spacing, look at the what you want to plant, what your main crops are. Like I said, this garden's designed off of tomatoes, potatoes, and peppers really. And then the rest are all things like onions going around each of the lower beds and sprinkled in between peppers and lettuce sprinkled in between peppers and basil sprinkled in between plants and flowers sprinkled in here where I have space. Or on the corners so most of the most of the design of the garden is for you know those four or five crops and everything else is where can I fit it is the mentality here if you have any questions or if you want to go over anything else please comment below and let me know or find me on Instagram and if you haven't yet please like and subscribe and I will be putting out some more videos this weekend thanks for watching